If you look back over the program you've just seen, the Voices of Time, I think you'll find yourself impressed by two things. First of all, the immensity of geological time. The Grand Canyon alone preserves a record of the last two billion years, and even that's less than half of the age of the Earth. And the second thing that I think that you'll find yourself impressed with is the way that geologists can take rocks like those in the Grand Canyon and interpret the geological history of the area from them. And by geological history, I mean the comings and goings of seas and the building and the wearing down of mountain ranges. It sounds a formidable task, uh, but it's not so very difficult. And if we look at some of the rocks that one might find in an area like the Grand Canyon, I think perhaps that you'll agree. These are rocks like those found in the Grand Canyon. And there's a very obvious visible difference. This rock is a platy one, rather like a paving stone. It's formed of sand and mud, and on its surface, It has the trademarks of a rock which was deposited in water. These little ripple marks must be familiar to anybody who's ever walked along the shore of a lake or a beach. This second rock has not got such clear layering in it, but it has some layering. This dark band is quite clearly distinct from the pinkish bands in this rock. This is a metamorphic rock, and the clues that it yields to the history of an area lie in the fact that to produce this kind of rock, sedimentary rocks must be cooked and put under pressure equivalent to several miles of overlying rocks. So metamorphic rocks occur in the roots of mountain bolts, and when we see them at the surface, we know there was a mountain bolt once there. This rock is distinct yet again. It has no layering at all, and if you were to take a hand lens, you would see that it was composed of interlocking crystals. That rock is an igneous rock. It was once molten. It's the kind of rock that we get when lava crystallizes. If you can recognize the differences between those rocks, then you can interpret road cuts. A road cut like this one, for example, is formed of sedimentary rock. It was taken close to the university in Sudbury. This one here was taken down Highway 69. It's clearly of a metamorphic rock. And if you can recognize it, then you can tell that in this area, there was once a mountain range. And you're looking at the eroded roots of that mountain range. Now, you can do that anywhere. And there's some books which will help you. There's a series of books produced by the Geological Survey of Canada, one for each of the national parks, right from the west, from the Rocky Mountains, through to Prince Edward Island in the east. There are also books produced by the Ontario Department of Mines. There are a number of these, four at present, and they describe the geology of various parts of Ontario. Geology is, in fact, very much a science in which everybody can make their own observations and interpretations. All you need to be able to do are basically to recognize those three kinds of rocks that we talked of and know how to interpret them. And this course is designed to give you the background to do just that, and the background to be able to look at the way that the Earth works and to be able to understand the way that the Earth works. There are 22 hours of television, 16 specially produced hours, and six hours of OECA's Planet of Man programs. But it's important that you remember that the main part of the material that's needed to begin learning about geology is contained in the textbooks that we've recommended to those of you taking the course and in the notes that we've supplied you with. The television programs cover most of the topics of geology, but they don't cover everything. The programs are of 
various kinds. There are programs which cover the ground rules which geologists use in looking at the Earth as a whole. And surprisingly enough, even though geology is 200 years old as a science, those ground rules have changed relatively recently. In the last 10 years or so, it's become clear that the Earth is covered by a shell of rigid, rocky plates, which fit together rather like the pieces of a spherical jigsaw puzzle. This picture of the Earth has revolutionized the way that geologists look at our planet, and it's also fundamental to this course. We'll be concerned with plates, for example, in the unit which deals with volcanoes, because active volcanoes are generally located at the margins of the plates. Earthquakes are also located at the margins of plates, and earthquakes will be the subject of another unit in the course. When plates converge, oceans are squeezed out of existence, and mountains are built when continents collide. This dramatic animation is from one of the best of the OECA films. Mountain building and the geological character of oceans are the subjects of their own units in the course. New mountains, like the Himalayas, born through one geological process, are subjected to simultaneous destruction by another, erosion. And we shall also examine erosion in one of the later units in the course. These worn down mountains are the Appalachians, formed about 300 million years ago when Europe, North America, and then Africa collided. The Appalachians are the topic of the OECA film included in the unit on mountain building. As well as looking at the ground rules for global geology in some of the early programs, we'll also take a look at the, the real stuff of geology, at, at minerals, and we won't forget the way that minerals are put together at their atomic structures, and also at, at rocks, not just trying to pigeonhole rocks, trying to distinguish them one from, from another, but looking at the way that they originate. For example, this sedimentary rock with its ripple marks, and we'll find that those units, those early ones, are some of the most difficult in the course, in fact. This beach sand bears a very easily readable clue to its origin, and much of the study of sedimentary rocks involves making comparisons between the present and the past, between today's processes and yesterday's rock. Lab experiments are also important in understanding rocks, and we've included in the TV programs film of many laboratory demonstrations. This one shows how grains are cemented together when sandstone forms from loose sand. And this one shows a hot liquid crystallizing, an important process to understand when interpreting igneous rocks, those which crystallize from a molten liquid, for example, lava. One experiment commonly used by geologists in this field is the simulation of the conditions under which molten material crystallizes at great depths far beneath the surface of the Earth. Rock powder is heated to melting point and then uh, allowed to cool under great pressure. comparison of the composition and structure with uh, an actual rock reveals whether the geologists estimate of the temperature and pressure was accurate or not. Many rocks show clear